Okay, in the next minute, I will cover what you need to know about intranasal meds. There's so much more, and we get into the details in the rest of the video. Don't miss the rest of the video to be fully prepared. Intranasal meds are safe and effective, and you can give them easily with these steps. One, partner with the parent and the child. Two, stabilize the head. Use help if you have it. Three, Typically, we pull up an extra 0.1 ml of medicine to account for the empty space in the mucosal atomizer device. Four, lean the patient back a little. Five, get a good seal and point towards the tip of the ear. Six, depress plunger quickly to create mist. Seven, give half in each nostril to optimize absorption. Max volume per nostril is one ml. Just pick the nose. It is easy on you on the patient and it works fast. Okay, that's what you need to know. Go and do it or take a few more moments to be even better prepared. Welcome to the Emergency Medical Services for Children Innovation and Improvement Center's Just-In-Time video. I'm Justine DeMazzo, a paramedic supervisor in Santa Rosa, California. I've been a paramedic for eight years and I actually really enjoy my pediatric calls, not only to challenge myself, but because I know I can make a difference for the patient. Today, I'm going to tell you three reasons why you should consider picking the nose or using the intranasal route and how to do it. Intranasal medications in the field can be used for anxiety, seizure control, and opiate overdose, but Probably my favorite is pain control for kids. I like the intranasal route for pain control for four reasons. One, it is easier for you. There are no needles, so it's not as dangerous for us as providers. The nose is a much bigger target to aim for, and we all know it is a challenge to get an IV and a young child in pain. Two, it is easier for the child because it is not as painful or scary as a needle. Three, it is faster and more reliable than the oral route. The nose-brain pathway is a quicker onset than by mouth and only slightly slower than by IV. And if you account for the time it takes to get an IV, intranasal can end up being faster. It works quicker than oral route because the nose is so vascular and innervated. The meds are atomized and absorbed on the nasal mucosa. Four, there are not as many side effects. Okay, now we know why. Now let's get into how. Let's say you have a five-year-old with a deformed forearm. You place the splint, elevate, grab a cold pack, and get ready to head to the hospital. The child is clearly in pain, so you go for the intranasal route. Intranasal meds are given based on weight. First off, calculate the dose per your local protocol. The TREC EIIC pain management treatment algorithm recommends fentanyl, 1.5 micrograms per kilogram per dose with a max of 100 micrograms per dose or one ml per nostril. Then if needed 10 minutes after the first dose, you can give another one microgram per kilogram per dose max of 50 micrograms per dose. This may feel like a lot, but absorption is different via the intranasal route, so you need roughly two times the IV dose. So if the child is 20 kilograms, we multiply 20 by 1.5 and get 30 micrograms. The concentration is 50 micrograms per ml. So we divide 30 micrograms by 50 micrograms per ml, which equals 0.6 ml. Typically, we pull up an extra 0.1 of medicine to account for the empty space in the mat or mucosal atomizer device the first time, so we will actually draw up 0.7 ml. Double check your dose. You want to set yourself up for success, and in kids, that means partnering with the child and the parent. I like to tell the child what to expect and let the patient touch the mucosal atomizer device and ask questions. That way, they are not surprised. I describe it as a sensation you get when you jump in the pool and get water in your nose. I also let them know it's okay for a child to be comfortable while we figure out what's going on. It does not make a child weak to treat pain and there are real long-term consequences to not treating pain. One of those consequences is the negative way children could then view us and the medical system as a whole if we leave them in pain. If there is help, use it. The downside to intranasal medication is it burns and often has a bitter taste. So if the child is awake, use a parent or colleague to stabilize the head. Sometimes you might need to tuck a blanket around the arms to keep their hands from popping up and helping you. Use your other hand to stabilize the head 
wear gloves, and consider a mask as patients can spit it back out at you. If there is mucus or secretions, suction it out first. It won't work if there is copious blood or mucus to block the uptake. Lean the patient back a little so the meds don't just drip down the throat or drip out the nose. You want a good seal on the nose and point up and out. The tip should point to the top of the ear on the same side of the nostril. Give half in each nostril if it is more than 0.3 ml and no more than 1 ml in each nostril. Rapidly push the plunger. If you don't push the plunger fast enough, the medicine will not aerosolize and they will likely swallow the medicine. Then you lost the advantage of the nose. Okay, quick review. Partner with the patient and the parent. Stabilize the head. Use help if you have it. Suction out, make room for the meds. Sit the patient up, leaning back slightly. Get a good seal and point towards the tip of the ear. Give half in each nostril to optimize absorption. Just pick the nose. It is easy on you, on the patient, and it works fast. I hope this video helps you feel confident giving intranasal medications for children in pain. Find additional resources on managing pediatric pain by visiting the EIIC website and search Peak Pain.